fellow countrymen and women, you have just listened to the leader and the flag bearer of the great NDC, and God willing, the next president of the Republic of Ghana. My duty here is to present highlights of key policies of the next NDC government as captured in the Manifesto 2024. Colleagues, to achieve our fiscal policy and economic goals, the next NDC government will aggressively pursue the following policies. One, we will reset the entire fiscal framework to achieve efficient resource mobilization and effective utilization of public funds. Two, we will shift from the over-concentration of the macro economy to the micro economy, where investment in the rare sector will anchor sustainable macroeconomic environment and economic growth. We will implement an enduring economic policy to build sustainable economic buffers to stabilize and cushion the Ghana city. We will undertake a number of reforms. First is the value-added tax reform, VAT reforms. Currently, Ghana's effective VAT rate is about 22 percent, in fact, the highest in Africa. This is because get fund levy of 2.5 percent, national health insurance levy of another 2.5 percent, and COVID levy of 1 percent are all added to the statutory VAT rate of 15 percent for the final determination of a value added tax. Businesses are not allowed to deduct their input VAT for NHL, get fund, and COVID levy. Aside the high effective VAT rate, Ghanaians are compelled to pay 3 and 6 percent of flat rate for VAT purposes. This effectively defeats the key principles of the input output of the value added tax regime. In fact, some businesses are now unable to cope with this high tax regime, and as a result, they are relocating from Ghana to places like Togo, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, and Nigeria. It's also a fact that this is part of the reasons why some of our citizens, particularly professionals, are migrating out of our country in droves in search for greener pastures. The NPP government has distorted Ghana's value-added tax policy by implementing both sales tax and value-added tax at the same time. This is indeed the height of incompetence on the part of NPP in tax policy formulation and administration. Our pledge, the next NDC government will undertake a comprehensive review of Ghana's VAT regime. This is indeed intended to provide a relief for households and businesses. We will therefore adhere to the underlying input-output principles of the value-added tax regime. The next NDC government will do the following. One, abolish the COVID levy. Two, we will reverse the decoupling of the get fund and hill and COVID levy from the value-added tax system will reduce the effective VAT rate from the 22% to a bearable limit. We will reverse the VAT flat rate and we will upwardly adjust the VAT registration threshold to exempt micro and small businesses from the collection of value-added tax. We will improve VAT compliance through public education and awareness. Aside the VAT reforms, we will also undertake a public debt management reforms. In fact, to restore confidence in Ghana's economy and the capital market, and to prevent a repeat of President Akufuado and Vice President Baumier's reckless and excessive borrowing that resulted in crude and painful haircuts, 
the next NDC government will establish an independent public debt management office to ensure effective public debt management. We will also review and enforce the Fiscal Responsibility Act, Act 982, and implement a fiscal consolidation plan to ensure fiscal discipline. We will also implement a deliberate policy to build sustainable economic buffers to cushion and stabilize the Ghana city. We will also undertake a public expenditure management reforms. And in doing so, we will tackle the wastage of public funds and ensure prudent expenditure management. And we will also do the following. We will establish an independent value for money office to scrutinize government procurement above a threshold to be determined by Parliament. We will reset the entire fiscal framework and implement a robust fiscal policy regime for effective utilization of public funds. Colleagues, historically, the Ghanaian economy has been the second largest in West Africa, aside Nigeria. But Ghana has lost its enviable position to Côte d'Ivoire due to lack of investment and dedicated policy towards economic transformation and growth. As at end 2016, the size of Ghana's economy was 55 billion Ghana cities, representing the second in West Africa, whilst that of Côte d'Ivoire was 48 billion Ghana cities, the third largest in West Africa. However, in 2022, Ghana lost its enviable position of the second largest economy in West Africa to Côte d'Ivoire. At the time, in the year 2022, Ghana's GDP was $73 billion, whilst that of Ivory Coast was $75 billion. So since independence, for the first time, Ivory Coast overtook us in terms of the size of GDP as of the year 2022. This situation is projected to worsen by the end of this year, whilst the Ivory Coast GDP is projected to be $89 billion. US dollars. Ghana's projected GDP by the end of this year is estimated to be 75 billion US dollars. Honorable members and colleagues, in order to reverse this downward trend, the next NDC government will introduce and implement a $10 billion big push. This big push is aimed at driving the needed focus and investment for economic growth and transformation. The big push will be a major economic policy of the next NDC government with four key economic growth poles. First is the Western Corridor Economic, economic Enclave project. And then second is the Eastern Corridor Golden Growth Agenda. The third is the Transformational Road Transport Plan. And the fourth is the Cocoa and Palm Economic Crop Rejuvenation Program. Ladies and gentlemen, the NPP government has been a monumental failure. They have destroyed our livelihood. They have indeed driven our economy aground. They have collapsed Ghana's cocoa sector. They have wasted and dissipated Ghana's public fund. They have destroyed our good governance. They have reversed the progress of our country. They have delivered crude and painful haircuts across the board. They have corrupted the moral fiber of our dear country. And of course, they have implemented the Ejapadie State Capture Plan. Let me say, fellow countrymen and women, that a time has come for us to come together to restore our country and reset our country. Many of you are Abani Abani is not going to be able to do Abani is not going to be able to do it. It is not going to be able to John and what children are begging to say, if you can have. Diet to Sramo de Mumbuahen, fifty man to Mufo. Mamuni made the NDC party, the Yaka party, or Junior Juan, only NDC party. 
Embri Diaraba, Wabuahen, Yatutu Zamuina, Mumba Kayaho, Nayan Yagana, only ye, the son the baby Agana Rokon, Waya Homotodo, baby or money quay, say young come boom, not say young Jay or money and fee MPP once a man, a crew or Bessay, Madame Massibi, Amish Ramina.